declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. The six months after the United States declared war on Japan in December 1941 were disastrous. Political treachery and military incompetence led to a series of major military defeats despite years of preparation. Official American history portrays President Franklin Roosevelt and his team of admirals and generals as great professionals. Actual history proves them incompetent clowns who caused embarrassing defeats that the American media covered up. Most of this history remains hidden to this day, especially in school and college textbooks. Americans are told that their government was unprepared for war and surprised by the Japanese attack at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. An official U.S. Army document, Highlights of Mobilization, World War II, 1938 to 1942, link below, proves otherwise. Note that World War II didn't officially begin until Germany invaded Poland in September 1939. Yet the United States started mobilizing for war in 1938, when the U.S. Army had 167,000 active duty soldiers. It tripled that number to 500,000 by January 1941, Plus, 630,000 draftees were in training to create a 1.4 million man army by 1942. The U.S. Army built 45 new military bases by 1941 with around 30,000 soldiers each. The Navy began a massive ship construction program. Overall military spending doubled between 1935 and 1940. In 1941, Construction of the huge Pentagon headquarters complex began as the military budget exploded four times higher that year. This massive mobilization occurred before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. World War II had begun years before, so American generals and admirals were very familiar with the effectiveness of weaponry and tactics used. Yet during the first six months of combat in 1942, American forces suffered a series of embarrassing defeats. The war officially began for the United States with the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, where the alleged incompetence was literally unbelievable. The Navy considered a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor likely and wanted to move its fleet back to San Diego. President Roosevelt refused, so the Navy conducted exercises to defend Hawaii from an expected attack. One can argue that American admirals and generals in Hawaii were incompetent, but facts revealed in two Tales of the American Empire videos, the attack on Pearl Harbor was no surprise, link below, are compelling. They reveal that President Roosevelt clearly wanted war, provoked Japan, and knew that a huge Japanese fleet was sailing to Hawaii. Most Americans were against joining the war, but the attack on Pearl Harbor provided the excuse to declare war. Germany promptly declared war on the United States to support its ally and dispatched 20 submarines called U-boats to attack American ships along the Atlantic coast. Despite years of directly assisting the British to protect convoys, there were no plans to protect American waters. During the first six months of 1942, German U-boats sank 225 American merchant vessels along the Atlantic coast. As defenses improved, U-boats sailed into the Gulf of Mexico to slaughter ships. More than 4,600 American merchant sailors and civilians perished 
inside 397 defenseless American ships, while Germany lost just eight small U-boats and 332 crewmen. Tales of the American Empire produced U-Boats Slaughtered Americans in 1942 about this tragedy. It is linked below. In 1941, the United States Navy and Marine Corps began to fortify key islands in the Pacific. On December 7th, the American battleship fleet was badly damaged at Pearl Harbor, but no American aircraft carriers were present. Within days, three American aircraft carriers had assembled in Hawaii as U.S. Marines on Wake Island repulsed a small Japanese amphibious landing on December 11th. The Japanese were sure to return to Wake, so a plan was approved and a task force with three carriers deployed to surprise and destroy the Japanese. But it was recalled by an incompetent admiral and a great chance at victory was lost as some 2,000 Americans were killed or taken prisoner on Wake Island. Tales of the American Empire produced The Lost Victory on Wake Island about this cowardness. It is linked below. A few hours after the Pearl Harbor attack, the Japanese began an invasion of the American territory of the Philippines. The conquest of the Philippines by Japan is the worst major military defeat in United States history. After just four months of fighting, over 23,000 American military personnel were killed or captured, while embedded Filipino soldiers killed or captured totaled over 100,000. The soldiers fought well, but the overall defense plan was horribly incompetent, resulting in a rapid defeat by a smaller Japanese force. General Douglas MacArthur had ordered all American forces into the malaria-infested Bataan Peninsula with limited food supplies where they were trapped and forced to surrender. Tales of the American Empire produced The Empire's Disastrous Defeat in 1942 about the U.S. Army's most embarrassing defeat. Link below. General MacArthur was awarded the Medal of Honor to help cover up this disaster. The performance of some U.S. Army generals in the Philippines was atrocious. General Douglas MacArthur was told by the White House to allow the Japanese to strike first. As a result, he refused to alert his forces when informed about the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. When U.S. Army officers learned of the attack from radio broadcasts, they pleaded with MacArthur's headquarters to authorize actions, but MacArthur hid in his office and refused all visitors and phone calls until Japanese bombs fell on Manila, wiping out dozens of aircraft parked on the ground at nearby Clark Field. During the Japanese invasion, they faced a huge logistical problem because the only port near the American army at Bataan was guarded by Fort Wint in Subic Bay. This problem was solved when this key fort was abandoned without firing a shot. The worst treachery occurred when U.S. Army Major General William Sharp committed treason by bullying his officers to surrender 20,000 troops scattered in the central and southern Philippines. They were not in danger, and General MacArthur had ordered Sharp to keep fighting, but Sharp chose to surrender than fight. Tales of the American Empire produced Treachery of U.S. Army Generals in World War II about these crimes. It is linked below. Few Americans know about the destruction of the U.S. Asiatic Fleet in the Java Sea in February 1942. Allied admirals had underestimated the Japanese Navy and failed to establish a strategy to counter its plan to seize vital oil fields and refineries in the Dutch East Indies. American sailors fought bravely against superior Japanese forces in a disorganized defensive effort as 20 American warships were sunk, 2,000 sailors killed, and hundreds taken prisoner in a disaster that became known as the Battle of Java Sea. Tales of the American Empire produced the destruction of the Asiatic fleet, link below, about this disaster. These embarrassing defeats hurt Roosevelt's image, and he demanded a victory, so one was invented. A plan was concocted to fly 16 new U.S. Army bombers off an aircraft carrier in April 1942 on a one-way suicide mission to bomb Tokyo, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle. 
which became known as the Doolittle Raid. Most crewmen bailed out and survived, but Doolittle considered the raid a failure since 16 modern bombers were lost that only caused minor damage in Japan. However, President Roosevelt's propaganda machine ensured the mission was deemed a great success. Tales of the American Empire produced World War II suicide missions about this raid. Link below. The rapid Japanese advance upended Roosevelt's overall war plan. His priority was to defeat Germany, while American forces in the Pacific contained the Japanese. However, the American forces were quickly overrun, and a Japanese invasion of Australia was feared. Australia had joined the war against Germany in 1939, and most of its army was fighting alongside the British in Africa. Political pressure at home forced its government to begin recalling units from Africa. This infuriated the British, who were engaged in desperate battles. As a result, Roosevelt agreed to dispatch major American forces to the South Pacific. The Battle of Coral Sea in May 1942 is considered a draw with both sides losing an aircraft carrier. In June 1942, the U.S. military finally had a victory with the Battle of Midway, where four Japanese aircraft carriers were sunk with the loss of one American, the USS Yorktown. History books overlook these American military disasters in 1942 because wartime censorship and propaganda hid them from the American public even long after the war ended.